So in this video I'll explain uh, five common approaches to qualitative research. These are narrative research, phenomenology, grounded theory, case study research and ethnography. And uh, before I start it's important to point out uh, that you may have heard about different classifications. So there are other classifications, some of them list more methodology, some of them list uh, less methodologies. Uh, then you have authors who refer to something I refer to as methodology such as case study research or ground the theory as methods. So of course it's, it can be confusing as anything in qualitative research in case you haven't noticed. So uh, hopefully I can make it clearer for you. So I chose these five common methodologies and I feel that these are probably the most consistently listed methodologies in all these, all these different classifications. So hopefully this way it will become clear to you what they are. The first in our list is narrative research and the purpose of narrative research is to gather lived and understand, gather and understand lived experiences of uh, one individual most often but sometimes two individuals or a small group of individuals. Like I said most more often than not it's one person. So the procedure here uh, consists of focusing on one as I said one or two individuals uh, usually uh, gathering their stories, reporting these uh, experiences and uh, ordering the meaning of these experiences. And uh, in narrative research there is, a, there is a strong focus on the relationship between the researcher and uh, the participants as well. So, so the stories that the researcher gathers may be the stories uh, told to the researcher by the participants or they can be stories uh, that were co-constructed, the meaning that was co-constructed between the researcher and the participant. So, uh, so as I said, there is a strong focus on the interaction, on the role of researcher in this, in this research uh, context. And also there is a strong focus on identity. So strong focus on the participants' identities, how they see themselves. And despite uh, what the name may suggest, narrative doesn't necessarily have to be uh, a story, it doesn't necessarily have to be written uh, written data. So in fact, uh, usually in narrative research data is uh, collected through interviews, but then also other methods are, are used. So observations, some kind of artifacts, photos, arts, uh, or written, written texts such as uh, diary entries. And it is also important to note that narrative may refer both to the studied phenomenon, so for example narrative of illness, and the method, so analyzing the stories. In terms of uh, challenges that narrative researchers face, uh, probably the main, the most often uh, mentioned challenge is to identify this kind of source information, source data, to identify the data that will give us this uh, in-depth and accurate view of the participants' lived experiences. And the second methodology that I want to discuss is phenomenology. I'm sure you've heard this name, uh, maybe you've even managed to pronounce it correctly. And uh, phenomenology, unlike, uh, as you may have heard, focuses on studying uh, how uh, people make sense of a given phenomenon. So uh, the first thought that may come to your mind is how is it different from narrative? So it was also about studying lived experiences, about studying a phenomenon. Uh, but here uh, the key difference is that, as I said, in narrative research, uh, the focus was on studying one person or maybe two people and how these specific individuals uh, make sense of whatever we are investigating. And in phenomenology we're interested in a group of people and uh, the focus is specifically to reduce these individual differences and come, uh, come up with some uh, common themes. So how uh, so with some universal themes, how people generally tend to make sense of a given phenomenon. So the researcher uh, collects data from people who have experienced this phenomenon and importantly this phenomenon may be different things again. So it can be uh, some problems, so uh, for example insomnia or something more abstract such as a happy relationship for example. So the purpose or the final output of phenomenology research is a det detailed description of, uh, of what these people experiences, re experience and how they experienced it. So uh, again because it focuses on a number of people and more universally shared uh, ways to experience uh, that phenomenon, uh, the sample size is bigger. So the sample size is at least I would say five participants but more often than not 10 or 15 or even 20. So again this is another uh, key difference from uh, narrative research. And in order to collect together, to gain this detailed in-depth understanding of how they make sense of this phenomenon, again, uh, 
interviews are probably the most common method in uh, phenomenology uh, but also you have other methods so again observations and some textual uh, data and in terms of the interviews because as i said they definitely are the most common method in this in this methodology the interviews tend to be very open-ended and usually they even have one or two very broad questions that uh, that encourage the participants to simply reflect on on this phenomenon and how and when they experience this phenomenon and now in terms of challenges in phenomenology uh, the first challenge is uh, is probably to find people who have experienced this phenomenon that we are interested in investigating and the second uh, challenge is uh, that this methodology requires quite a lot of focus on uh, philosophy on philosophical assumptions nobody likes this if you uh, if you want to know more about worldviews uh, there is a, there is a video that I recorded about positivism interpretivism and a couple of other confusing things but uh, let's agree on this like I said we just don't like thinking and talking about these philosophies and phenomenology you are expected to have quite a good understanding of these philosophies and to talk, of, uh, talk about them quite a lot, to join, to link them to your study. So this may be challenging to some people, but then on the other hand, of course, some people may actually enjoy this aspect of, of phenomenology. Another one, another methodology is grounded theory. I do have a separate video about grounded theory, so I won't go into too much detail of this methodology. But to summarize, it's a, uh, it's a methodology that aims at generating a theory or a detailed explanation from the data so uh, probably another key characteristic of grounded theory is that uh, there is a strong focus on not using pre preconceived ideas uh, pre-established knowledge so there's a strong focus on becoming on having this blank mind and uh, making sure that our theory or explanation is grounded in the data in the data that we collected so it emerges strictly from the data another characteristic of grounded theory is that usually uh, grounded theory is used to uh, is applied to context where a certain phenomenon or something that we are investigating is under researched so again this is because we uh, we don't want to use any preconceived ideas or frameworks or models so uh, so if we don't know much about a given a given situation or phenomenon uh, then we quite often decide to apply grounded theory and then there is a, a range of procedures and elements quite specific to grounded theory so uh, notions such as theoretical sampling is also something i explain in another video uh, specific approaches to to coding and data analysis so there is a couple of uh, a couple of very specific procedures. Uh, this methodology has been gaining popularity. That's that's uh, for sure uh, in recent years. And uh, if you want to know more about it, like I said, there is another video on my channel. But overall, my message to you is that grounded theory doesn't have to be very complex and overwhelming. It often feels this way. And I remember as a student, I was. Uh, quite anxious about even when I heard about grounded theory I didn't think I would ever want to do this because the message that I got from the teachers is that it's something very complex and in practice it's really not that complex it's, it can be a really fun methodology and nowadays it's probably my among my favorite or my favorite methodology regarding challenges in grounded theory uh, as I said it's there certainly can be challenges because of these uh, specific uh, procedures. So the challenge is probably to make sure that if you are uh, conducting a grounded theory study is to make sure that in fact you are conducting it in line with with the procedures of a grounded theory study. And again I talk about uh, more about this in my in my other video so there are ways around this. You can simply say that you, you're based on uh, your study is strongly based on grounded theory just to avoid uh, these people pointing to different elements of your study that not necessarily uh, meet the criteria of, of this methodology. And now the next one is ethnography. So ethnography is a study of uh, people in their natural setting. So uh, you may have heard this, this kind of a definition or description before, uh, a study of people in their natural setting. Uh, traditionally, it did mean uh, studying indigenous people tribes so uh, so that's uh, being an ethnographer at the beginning of the 20th century or earlier than that certainly was a very very exciting thing to do so so that's how it originated that's how it started they were studying people so 
certain tribes, for example, or you know, desert islands, or not desert islands, but remote islands. Uh, they were immersed in that culture, they were living with them, and they were studying them. That's, that's how ethnography developed. But nowadays, it doesn't have to be that uh, extreme. So basically, this, uh, these people in, in their natural settings can be, for example, teachers, teachers in their school. So, so, so the definition of of this natural, naturally occurring setting is quite broad. It doesn't have to be uh, th this extreme context that I mentioned. Regardless of uh, who we are investigating, the point is to investigate a certain uh, cultural group. So, as I said, it may be a culture as in the culture of teachers, but the point is to study a cultural, certain a cultural group, uh, a group that held, uh, holds certain shared values and cultures and beliefs. So a strong focus in ethnography is in, on exploring culture, on exploring these values, cultural values. As I said, the researcher is quite immersed in everyday life and everyday setting uh, of these participants. So very often uh, the method is observation, quite often in addition to other methods. So again, uh, interviews which tend to be very open-ended, probably the most open-ended interviews that you'll come across, but usually uh, probably almost uh, every time there has to be observation because that's the, that's the main uh, feature is to observe uh, the participants, like I said, in their, in their daily life. There are many challenges uh, associated with ethnography, so basically you need to have a very good uh, understanding of cultural uh, anthropology, of social cultural system and, and other terms and other uh, notions uh, like this and then uh, because it's so strongly based on on values and culture all these topics even even talking about them to me is a little bit confusing because i also don't have much experience with this methodology uh, it is more than just exploring a group of people or the views of a group of people as uh, as i'll discuss in a second when i talk about case study it's quite different because of this strong focus on these you know social norms and culture and this kind of thing All, also uh, the procedures uh, are quite demanding quite difficult so you know the time to collect the data being immersed in that setting and then even reporting uh, in ethnography is quite different to other methods or methodologies uh, because it's uh, the style of reporting tends to be quite different so if you're interested uh, in this method feel free to of course read up on it i won't cover every single aspect of it but i do feel like uh, it can be challenging which is not to say you shouldn't be doing it if if that's what you feel you want to do and finally a case study so a case study is a study uh, a detailed study of a bounded system this bounded system or a single case can be anything it can be one person it can be again a group of teachers it can be a school an institution or in extreme cases it could be a region or a whole country so uh, so it's studying that single case and in order to provide a really in-depth understanding of that case there is usually a more specific problem or topic or phenomenon to explore than in for example ethnography so you may be thinking uh, in ethnography, we're also, I, I just said, we're also focusing on a certain group of people in their natural setting, but it's different. In ethnography, the focus, like I said, is on culture generally. What, what is the culture, how it works? And like I said, it was, it is confusing. So, uh, so I don't, I can't even explain exactly what ethnography really wants to achieve. But in a case study, usually there is a specific problem. So, so it's, I would say it's a more common thing, uh, a common uh, research, type of research. You have a, a specific research question we want to know about this single case and you explore this case in depth so usually uh, you need several methods to to have a really detailed understanding of that case in terms of challenges of case study research again they are i would say they are quite common challenges it's just because i decided to focus on challenges and describe challenges of each methodology that i will even mention challenges of case study research so uh, the most obvious one is to identify what we understand by this case or a bounded system so that's 
one of the challenges uh, although i don't really think it's a big challenge if you have a good reason to believe that this is in fact your case to study uh, then uh, another challenge that's uh, commonly mentioned is to identify whether we want to focus on a single case for example or multiple cases so there is such a thing as a single case study or multiple case study if you're focusing if you're investigating multiple cases then of course uh, the challenge is probably in the analysis so you have to make sure that the analysis is still in-depth and accurate uh, as if as in in the single case study but again i don't really think it's a big challenge it's just something to consider if you are uh, if you're thinking about uh, using this methodology in your study so these are the five uh, probably most commonly discussed methodologies or approaches to research like i said there are also different models uh, there are also other methodologies or sets of procedures for example action research which is which can be quite confusing in terms of what it actually is uh, a number of people call it a methodology others call it uh, approach method and there are different terms terms for this so uh, do let me know if you want me to explore and explain action research also let me know if you want me to explain any of these particular methodologies in more detail so the purpose of this video was of course to just to provide a brief uh, overview of each methodology but let me know if you want to know more about any of these methodologies then again as always if you're new to this channel consider subscribing and if you learned something new from the video please like it to help the video get found and then finally if you require a more detailed uh, assistance a more tailored instruction feel free to explore my website for uh, services that i provide